Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk, and as you can see, we're in the new, I don't know what to call this, is it? I'm going to call it the workshop, the studio, the utility room, which is basically what it really is. Um, I don't know, but we're in here. Um, I'm not completely finished with it, um, still got bits and bastards, I still haven't managed to get the materials I need to build the shelving on that side, although I do actually have my, some, um, storage cupboards which I went and picked up from my um, storage unit I've got them in down at the bottom there which you can't see it's just off camera I've actually dug out my um, nice 1970s Grundig radiogram because I'm going to have that in here so I can listen to my records on it basically uh, that needs some major work to get it into a functioning state so that'll be coming up um, at some point but I was basically what I was doing, I was looking at my um, bench space here and planning out what I want to do with my bench space. And it occurred to me I could really do with a shelf at the back. Uh, basically along here, along here like that, I want a shelf so I can have um, you know, a monitor and things like that above. And perhaps my soldering iron desoldering stations and stuff, everything like that below. And... I was thinking it'd be nice to have some um, speakers as well, some um, powered speakers so I'm playing with something that I want to test the audio on. Um, I've got some reasonable um, powered speakers on the um, table. Just just a handy thing to um, have, so I was wondering speakers and um, in like a shelf and I was having a look on eBay, see if there was any um, cheap sound bars or something like that that I could perhaps uh, modify to do the um, to do the job. Anyway, I was at a mate's house um, the other day and I was wa walking back to my truck and I spotted something that um, someone had thrown and they put it out with the um, bins and it's this. Ooh, let me get it. Right, uh, what we've got here, this is a, um, a T-bow, um, basically it's a powered speaker. Uh, well, what, well, what this was, um, at first I thought it was just a sound bar, it was just a, a big sound bar. Um, it wasn't, this was actually a powered television stand. Um, I didn't, there was none of the rest of it there when I picked it up. This is just what had been left by the bin unless they'd broken the rest up and put it in the bin, I don't know. Um, I thought, ooh, soundbar, that, uh, that might be quite handy. So I grabbed it, I threw it in the back of my truck and I brought it home. It's only at that point I actually realised. Um, little swine's pinch the speakers out of it. So uh, there should be a sub in there. And if we pull these covers off, pull that one off as well. It's nice we do have the covers. Um, oh, yeah, and this is loose. It's basically someone has, it's obviously broken down, and um, someone's harvested uh, the speakers out of it. They haven't taken the tweeters, which is quite nice. Um, the tweeters are still there, but they have um, pinched, the, um, pinched the speakers out of it. Fortunately, uh, me being the hoarder that I am, um, and I generally don't throw much things away, I had a bit of a rummage in my uh, in my parts store, and we pick out. I've got a couple of um, couple speakers there, which I think should be about right for this. I think they should fit. Or oh, a little bit on the big side. Oh, that's a shame. Well, we can always cut the um, we can always cut it out to fit them um, slightly larger speakers, or I'll have another hunt in my um, stash see if I've got anything a little bit smaller. But one way or the other, um, we've got two speakers to go in there, and I've got a big sub speaker. I have got I've probably still got about ten or fifteen of these, and they came out of. Um, 1990s um, Altec Lansing um, computer subwoofers so uh, they are a really high quality speaker um, that should I think yes that does actually fit to replace that one there so what the plan is 
to get them speakers out of the way. So I'll see if I've got anything a little bit smaller. If not, we'll um, cut the uh, we'll just cut the cabinet out to um, fit those speakers in. Because with the covers on, you're not really going to tell. Is that gonna... Yeah, it should be absolutely fine. If we um, cut it in there, that'll go in like that. That'd recess night in there. So we could use those. Probably be a little bit of an upgrade for it anyway. But anyway, what I thought we'd do is we'd um, see if we can get this thing running. If we can get it running, um, we'll use it as is. If I can't get the amplifier in this going, if it's absolutely fried, um, what we'll probably do is um, just use this cabinet. Cause the cabinet is just what I was looking for. Right, I'll give you some idea what I'm thinking of. I'll just put my toolboxes. So I've got my two toolboxes which are about the same height. So I'll put one there. What I was thinking was something like this. So that will go across there like that. In fact, that's going to work really nicely, so I can have, basically, I've got room underneath to put my soldering equipment, things like that. I've got a shelf on top, and I've got somewhere I can put my monitor and things, so they're out of the way. It just gives me a little bit more um, space on my desk. So that will actually work really, really well. Ooh. Right, I think what I'll do, I'll get the camera... Set a little bit more up on the um, bench here. Um, we'll get this thing um, taken apart. We'll try and find out what's actually wrong with it. In fact, what we might do first, is we won't get any audio out of it. But we, um, if we plug this lot back up and put some power up here, at least we can see if um, see if it powers up. See if um, anything comes on this display here. I'm guessing that's probably probably touch sensors then. Um, see if that thing actually powers up. If it does, it could be amplifier or something like that. I'm not sure if it doesn't. It might be as simple as a um, just a simple power supply fault in here. So uh, I'll get the camera set back up so we can um, I can actually show you what I'm actually doing here. And uh, let's have a look. Right. Okay. First things first. Um, let's have a look at reconnecting this panel. Where have my glasses gone? There they are. I can see what I'm doing. Now fortunately there's only three connections so this is fairly easy. I can't see anything damaged on that board. No, nope. I thought there might be some damage to the IC there but it seems okay. So let's uh, let's connect this back up. That's that way on. There we go, that's that one in. We've got a three pin which is that one there. And we've got a four pin, which is this one right there. Okay. Let's turn that round. So that's the uh, control panel connected back up. Let's see, I've got an IEC. Oh, it's the. Um, you see it'll be figure of eight. Yeah, figure of eight feet. There's a power connector on the back here. Plug into that. The switch, we'll put the switch into the on position. I'll plug in, switch on. And have we got anything at all? It's actually completely dead. There doesn't seem to be any uh, any activity. Let's uh, let's try the switch. No, the thing is absolutely as dead as a doornail. Right, we'll unplug the power from it. But what I might do, let's put that back in. Now we've got it connected up. I'll just stick a couple of screws in so that's not flopping around while we're. Uh, while we're messing with it. I don't think that has the actual power amplifier module in it, I'm guessing. Where are they going to be a bit smaller? Yeah, they're a bit smaller. Let's find something a 
little bit longer to hold them in. Let's see what I've got. But basically, I don't want that flopping around while we're um, while we're fiddling with it. In fact, I wonder if I can pinch one of the screws out of there. Yeah, these are a bit a bit more substantial. Obviously, we'll need some screws to put the new speakers in as well. So. No, it just pulls out. Put that back in there. Just bear with me a sec. I'll just find a couple of screws just to hold that um, in place. Because I don't want it flopping around as we're um, handling this thing, so we could break one of them connections. So back in a sec. Okay, I just found a couple of um, wood screws and just stuck a couple of wood screws in there just to hold it. So we're not really worried about this thing. Um, we may end up taking all that off and putting our own um, amplifier in it yet. Let's turn it over and let's have a look. Right, so I'm guessing that the actual power amplifier is this unit here. Um, it's actually got most of its screws missing as well. Let's have a look and let's see what we can find in here. Oh, there's only two screws holding it in. Uh, right, let's see if we can get this out. Yeah, and there we go. So Obviously that's why nothing was um, working, everything has uh, literally been just ripped out of the thing. I cannot see any blown or um, bulging capacitors there. In fact it doesn't look in um, terrible condition, I can't see anything really really bad there. Let's have a, uh, let's have a look at this board, actually um, on the bench. Yeah, and those connections are basically what come off that um, front panel. So we've got the main ribbon cable there, we've got that little um, four wire and that um, three wire. So let us have a look at this. Let me get you down. There we go. doesn't look too bad. We've got obviously we've got our um, mains in there, our power supply. I wonder whether this is a split rail power supply or not. What I'm trying to figure out actually is where the uh, Hmm. Where the output um, module is, I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's that there. That one I see. I can't actually see any other um, drivers on here. I mean, these the, that board there is just your um, power supply. And that there will be the amplifier board. But I cannot see anything on there that looks like a big um, amplifier I see. The only thing I can see that it possibly could be is that there. Obviously, we've got our outputs for our speakers. Our speaker outputs are going to be. Um, those there are those those there hmm first thing we want to see is um is the fault on this board or is it on the uh, power supply board we'll see a fuse down there so uh, let's get the tester out where's my tester Right. 
first thing to test is let's see what the uh, mains fuse is telling us. And the mains fuse is okay. And we need to see if we can find it, figure out what this power board is going to tell us. So let's try disconnecting the power board from that board. And we will power it up and we'll see if we're getting sensible voltages actually coming out of the um, power supply. I mean, the thing is, even, like I say, even if this thing is completely scrap and we can't repair it, there's loads of um, salvageable parts on here. If this power supply is good, that should be a dual rail um, power supply. So uh, that'll be handy just on its own. Right, let's see. Uh, let's find where I put that right up. Figure of eight lead. Let's power this thing up as it is on the bench. And we will check some voltages on the uh, make sure that's on. That is switched on. Obviously we've got to be careful of it now. I'll get that into shot, hopefully you can see the meter there. Start at about, we'll start at the 200 volts range because we could have around about 30 volts depend, I doubt it actually yeah, because the um, audio IC, if that is the audio IC is absolutely tiny but we'll, we'll start up there we'll guess that black is ground we'll get a connection onto ground there Let's see if we've got anything on these other pins. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Let's try this one. Nothing there. So we don't seem to be having getting anything at all coming out of the uh, coming out of the power supply. power supply does appear to be absolutely dead. Right. Let's oh that was because the bloody cable hadn't gone in properly. There we go. Right, let's try that a test again shall we? I think that actually might have powered up because I heard a bit of a spark when I pulled the um, I, the figure of eight lead back in then. So Again, we'll go on ground there, or what I presume is ground. There we go. So we've got, um, I think we've got five volts there. That might be a sense wire actually, and this might be. We've definitely got five volts there. Now that will power the logic on this board here. It could be that that it doesn't start producing the voltage for the amplifier until um, it's told by this one of the probably that yellow wire there will be a sense wire. So uh, basically, the microcontroller in here, um, when the amplifier wants to be powered on, will send a sense signal um, to switch on, and then you'll probably get. Um, probably plus or minus a certain voltage on those two red wires in reference to the um, ground there. So I think the power supply is probably actually working. Um, what we'll do, I'll um, switch it off again and we'll unplug it again. We'll try connecting it up in the actual unit. Right, let's see if we can find the um, speaker connections. Let's see if we can find the speaker connections in here. The power supply definitely seems to have some life in it. You know, it's not completely, completely working. Now, it does seem like they may. 
Hmm. And may have actually um, taken the speaker connections out completely because I can't find any speaker wire, which is going to be a bit of a pain. Yeah, unfortunately, it's just the wires cut off from the um, tweeters going through the cabinet there. I can't find it. the other side of it in here. Oh, it's been cut off right there, yeah, so whoever did this um, actually took the speaker wire out from the inside as well as the... Uh, that's a bit annoying. Right, just bear with me a second folks and I'll um, see what I can come up with and we will carry right on. Okay, to make life easier, I've basically I've stripped the entire thing out of the cabinet. Um, it was only a case of getting that that bit of glue there out, breaking that out, and I was able to pull the whole wiring harness, uh, well, what's left of it, out of the um, cabinet, which should make troubleshooting on this thing a little bit easier. Right, um, first thing we better do is reconnect the power. Now I'm just interested at the moment to see if we can get anything up on the um, display, see if we can get that far. Let's connect that up to there. And that up to there. And then we'll connect the main ribbon cable up. Put that to the other side. And we'll connect them up on here. That's that one there. And that one. And we'll connect that one like that. Right, okay, so we've basically we've got the entire guts of that um, unit by the speakers just spread out on the bench here. Let's uh, put some power back up it. Quite a tight uh, figure of eight lead that. Let's switch on this time. Let's see if we get any um, activity on it. So there we go. Is that up ten? Let's see what happens if we try any of the. So that's definitely showing us that the uh, power supply, the other, uh, the power supply at least has some life in it. Let's see if these, right? Bluetooth. Have I got my phone on me? No, I haven't got my phone on me because um, I don't like it ringing when I'm trying to make um, videos. I might go and get my other um, phone and see if it'll connect to Bluetooth. What else works? RCA. Right. Okay. So we can actually auxiliary. Oh, this is quite good. USB. Optical, because it's got an optical um, input on it as well. Bluetooth. Yeah, so we've got RCA jacks. Um, auxiliary. Um, I don't know what COA is. Oh, coax. Oh, it's got um, an optical coax on it as well. Um, USB obviously um, and the optical yeah that's, that's actually pretty good right so uh, volume control works all the touch controls seem to um, actually work so we've got play fast forward and stop for sticking a USB um, a USB stick in there so what the only thing we need to do now really I'll, I'll get something we can actually connect up to it so we've got some um, audio we can play through it and um, we'll try and figure out. I'm going to need some cables, aren't I, to connect to the um, speaker outputs on there and see if we've actually got any outputs from it. But if not, I'm wondering. I don't know yet. I, I'm umming and I. 
is it going to be possible that we might be able to still use this interface? Because that looks quite nice, even if the amplifier section's um, fried. Could I use a different power amplifier? It, it obviously depends how much um, that main chip there actually does, but we do have two chips. We've got that there, which I'm guessing is the um, amplifier IC. And then we've got another IC there, which I'm guessing is the microcontroller, which actually, you know, runs the um, runs the controls there and does all the logic. Now, there's a potential of that it's just that that's fried. We still might be able to do something. I, I quite like that. Um, I quite like that little interface it's got. Especially the fact we've got the auxiliary on the front there. We've also got the access to the RCAs and we do have the digital and the USB on it. It would be quite a nice unit to actually use in its own right. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll pause the video and I'll go and have a hunt in my wire stash and see if I've got any connectors that will um, easily mate up to them, um, connections on there and we'll see about lashing some speakers up on this thing and actually see um, where we can get any audio out of it. So, uh, back in a sec. Right, I've had a rummage round and I've found they're not the right connectors but they'll um, fit on the pins so we can connect these speakers up. I've got my old um, iPhone here in a lead. So we've got Bluetooth and that and we can also test the auxiliary um, on the front of there as well. Let's try connecting these speakers. See, I don't know which two of these are for the sob and which two of these are for the um, main speakers because nothing is labelled this board's uh, really got, got some really bad labelling on it but uh, I think we can lash it up we'll see if we get any audio out of it at all I'm guessing there must be a fault on that board um, otherwise why would they be thrown it away let's see well we're on Let's see, uh, let's try auxiliary first, that's the easiest one to um, try because I've got an I, an R, I've got a uh, 3.5 um, jack, stereo jack to stereo jack lead here, plug in there, I can't hear anything, let's see if I can get something to play through my phone, I'm not even hearing the uh, clicks from my uh, clicks from my phone there or anything. Um, let's see what we can get on here. Just bear with me a second. Right, let's have a look. I'll just get YouTube up and um, we'll search. Royalty 3 background music. We've got ambient music, ambient chill music here. And this is what I used last time I needed some uh, something to play. Now is that playing? There we go. So we should have something playing there. We seem to be getting absolutely nothing at all. Nothing at all out of the um, out of the unit. Let's try the other um, connections. I have to be a bit careful here, obviously, because I'm um, that part there is live. But I try swapping one of these and putting it in over there. Again, there's nothing there. So I think we can be pretty certain it's the actual um, power amplifier on here which has died. Because all the control stuff seems to work alright. Um, so we can. Let's try Bluetooth just to just see if we can connect it to Bluetooth. But I have a feeling. Just in case that that cable's no good, but I have a feeling that we found what's wrong. It's the main, uh, the main amplifier I see is probably bad on it. 
let's uh, just quickly see if we can get my phone to connect uh, via Bluetooth to it. Settings. Bluetooth on. Let's see if we can get this to discover it. It's searching now. Leave that there, see if it'll um, connect to it. It is searching, but it's not finding anything at the moment. There's a little Bluetooth module um, at the end there, so it's, it should be able to work. Unless it just can't find it. We don't seem to be getting any any activity out of the audio section at all. So unfortunately, I think it does look like that is fairly um, fairly fried, to be honest. Uh, but on the good side, we've got a um, cabinet that we can use. We've got the uh, power supply, which will come in for um, probably come in for another um, project. And I'm still not 100% sure if we can't possibly um, use the control part of this and um, hmm. in fact thinking about it I wonder if we'd certainly be able to possibly get the auxiliary um, on the front working just using that Hold me a second chaps, um, I'm just going to have a think about this and see which way I'm going to um, approach it. Like, so as we can see, um, I'm pretty certain the fault actually is going to be the main uh, the main amplifier um, I see there. Um, the solder on the back of it, it looks like someone may have fiddled with it in the past actually. Um, but we are getting absolutely zero audio output out of this device at all. Um, what we are what does work though is, um, like I said, the display works. It appears that all the switching and everything on that works. Um, it's just the audio side which is um, dead. So I'm going to have a bit of a probe around on the board. Um, have a bit of a think and see how I'm going to um, approach this. So, uh, back in a sec. Okay, well I've been looking around this thing further and I've actually just noticed something. I don't know if you can make out there on the board. But we've actually got a we've actually got a broken trace. Let me get you zoomed in, and you can have a proper look. Get you over. That's the power board. But if we get sorry, that's the um, amplifier. If we get you over onto the power board here, and I wiggle it, can you see that there? And basically, we've got uh, it's uh, one of the power transistors, and it's completely broken free. It's one. Of, it's a big. Um, got a big heat sink on it, and there's no, actually nothing apart from the transistor itself um, holding that heat sink, and it has completely broken free. Now, I hadn't noticed that before, so I'm wondering, could that be the only fault with this thing? Literally, could that be it? Could it just be the fact that we've got a broken, um, a broken trace there? What I'm going to do? I'll put the circle in here. And we're going to scrape away a bit of the uh, solder mask here around it. And we'll see if we can solder that back down. But I think it's also broken those two connections there. So we'll have to see what we can do with them. We might even have to run a bit of um, a bit of wire to bridge the um, bridge the break. But that. That um, component there is definitely not making proper contact. So, give the old iron a clean. There we go. We'll get some solder on that bit that I've cleaned the uh, 
clean the solder mask around. Let's see if we can get those to join. There we go. Just hold that while that goes off. There we go. So we've definitely got a connection between that point there and let's just check on the other two. I think we're going to have to put a little bit of a wire bridge in on one of them, but uh just put that down again. So we've got the that component is actually I think it's probably a transistor. It could be um, a MOSFET, it could be a um a voltage reg, but I doubt it. it's probably a transistor power transistor but uh, let's try cleaning some of it away from around there so that's the other place it definitely had broken away and I think it is still attached on that one there but I'm not a hundred percent a hundred percent sure we'll break take a bit away from there we'll see if we can get that to solder if this doesn't work, we'll have to take some little bits of wire and just make some wire links, but we might get away with it. Let's have a look there. There, that's taken. And this last one, let's just see. So the last one I think is probably still connected, but just to be on the safe side, I'm just going to scrape a little bit away from there careful not to get onto the next um, trace where it's not connected to it's just that one there so we'll scrape a bit away between those two points and we should be able to get a bridge between there so we can absolutely confirm we've got a, a, a connection on that on that component right, let's try that again let's try putting some solder on there There we go. So that's that component is now held back back in place. If I try and move it now, none of that's moving anymore. And that one there had definitely broken. That one looked like it was broken. That one looked like it was still connected. Sorry. Let's get you up there. Um, that connection there was definitely broken. Um, that one I think was most likely broken and that one there I think was probably still connected but uh, it, it obviously it had lifted the trace so we've just reinforced it with a little bit of extra solder um, what we could do if this, if this is successful and um, you know, we get some more improvements in the situation uh, what we'll probably do is clean a little bit more of that off and just solder a little bit more around there because there is only like a little tag there um, anchoring that down at the moment I'm just wondering what had actually caused that, whether, I mean it could be a case of um, when the person was ripping the speakers out of this thing, they did it then, you know, that's probably the most likely um, scenario, but we definitely had a fault there, and we don't have the, um, the other voltages that I would be expecting to be coming out of this power supply, so we only have the 5 volts at the moment coming out of the, uh, we get you zoom back out again. keep forgetting to zoom out. I need a remote control zoom really or something like that. In fact I need a better camera, that's what I need, but uh, uh, that'll have to wait at the moment. Right, okay, let's get that um, panel back in so we can see it. Let's see if we can get you out a little bit more. There we go, so you can see the panel there. Let me see if I move it a bit more into shot. So we've got the speakers connected up. Uh, I, again, I don't know whether they're connected up to where the sub should go or they're connected up to where the speaker should go. But we should at least get some some form of audio out of it. I've got my um, my old phone here. I've got a 3.5mm stereo lead here so we can go into the AUX port on the front of that. Let's give it another try now. We've, um, we've sorted that fault out. So let's currently put that in the off position. Get the figure of eight lead up. I'll be super careful not to touch anything, obviously, because this will be then live. Right there we go. Um, let's switch on and see if we've got any more um, improvements. So, 
switch on there, that's come up. In fact, let's get the meter first and let's see if we've got any voltages, uh, any change in voltages. Get my, uh, can you see the meter there? Yes, you can. You probably won't be able to when I uh, bend over it now to uh, pass. Get the meter there where you can see it. Let's see if we've made any improvement. I've gone with my long, um, thin test probes. Um, you can see I, me actually made these on one of my uh, videos if anyone's interested. But they are very handy for this where you want to probe. Oh right, we went right off the... Uh, that's more what I was expecting. What have we got there now? Yeah, we've got 24 volts on that one. But 24 volts on that one. That's more what I was expecting the uh, power amplifier to run at. So, um, we have got the power supply fully working again. That's rather good. But have we got any, any audio out of it at all? Let's get this back up. Plug that back in there. Uh, we'll go back through to... I'm hearing a click when I press that. There we go. Let's connect this up to an audio source and see if we get anything. But when I was pressing the um, button there, I was hearing a click coming out of the speaker. Let's connect this up. Yeah, I've only got 9% battery on this, damn. Let's forget trying to connect to the um, Bluetooth. Let's just go back to YouTube and then see if we can play some... We should have music playing out of there. I can't hear anything. But I definitely heard when I moved between them a click, which we hadn't got before. So we've got some life in the um, audio side. Have we got anything coming out of the um, phonos at the back? Let me just see if I've got a phono lead. I don't think I've got a phono lead down. Oh, hang on. I've got one in this dry here. Ah, we got here. Oh, well, we've got something we can just see if we've got anything coming out with it. So we've definitely got. Sorry, we've definitely got more than we had um, we had previously. We've got them missing voltages back. And we are actually getting, like I said, we're getting some clicks when we change the things on there. Let's uh, connect this to one of the RCA jacks on the back. Have we got anything? Just touching it, no. There's no buzzer, beep, or bump or anything out of it, but... Hang on. That goes quite loud. Let's go right up and see. Nothing there. Let's try on the other channel. Because you've got to be careful touching this because it is powered up and parts of this are alive. Again, still nothing um nothing there. Oh! Oh, look at that! I think we're on in the sub channel there. Let me just switch off. Right. Let's change the speakers on the amplifier. Let's unplug that just to be on the safe side. And we'll just disconnect the speakers on the amplifier and we'll move them over onto the other two sections on there. Oops, go on, get in. Yeah. And those aren't, well, one is the right connector, one isn't, but it does fit just about. Right, okay. Let's connect that back up. We'll switch back on now. We'll 
we'll go over to auxiliary again. There we are. I really can't believe that's all it was. Right. I mean, the auxiliary doesn't seem mega loud or anything, but I don't need it to be loud for what I want it for. That definitely works. I wonder if we can connect, get it to connect to um, Bluetooth then. Let's connect that. And let me just see if I can get my phone to um, pair with this on Bluetooth again. I tried before and it didn't do anything but... Oh! That's a new um, Manhattan. That's what this was. It was a um, T-Bow Manhattan. Let's see if that'll connect. There we go. Now let's um, go back to the music. There we are. And then we can get it a louder. But that is definitely. Twenty to the limit. There we go. That's working. That's Bluetooth from my um, that's Bluetooth from my phone. Excellent. Well, that, that proves um, the point. We, we do um, we can use this. We can use the um, amplifier. We can use the. So what I'm what I'm thinking of now is what was the what was the failure on this? Was that the original failure? Why this thing was thrown away? I'm wondering, did it fall over or something like that? Did it get knocked over the TV stand? Stop working. And the guy thought, oh, I'll take the speakers out because they might be useful, and then just cobbed it. Uh, because the amplifier board obviously works, um, Bluetooth works, you know, auxiliary works. So I'm pretty certain that the other inputs um, will work. And to be honest, auxiliary is going to be good enough for what I want. It's just nice having the RCAs and things like that on the back as well. So I'm. I'm Right, that's excellent. What I'm going to have to do now then is find some more of those connectors. So we can um, see if we can hook the sub up as well, get it all connected up and do a final test and then we'll have a look at uh, rebuilding it back into the cabinet with some modifications because I'm not putting it back in the cabinet exactly the way um, it would have came out. come out. I'm going to make some alterations to it. So I'll go and see if I can find a few more bits of um, connectors so we can connect it up the sub as well and give it a quick final test and then we'll have a look at um, doing a few modifications to the cabinet and actually building it into um, what I want so um, back in a bit. Right, um, let's test this sub. Now I had a fertile around and I don't actually have any of the correct connectors to connect onto there so I managed to find two before that fit. One's right, one's um, not right but it does fit uh, but what I did, I found a long um, connector about, well, that's what's left of it. It's one I've already salvaged bits off. I've already used bits of the hookup wire for various things. Uh, it were a big long connector like that. And basically what I've done is I've just cut two pieces out of that with two wires on. And the pin space in there is correct for those pins there. And they actually fit in fine. So we've got two wires there. Um... We're going to need some wires to go to the um, subs, the sub, singular. This is a scrap all wire off, um, it's off a spectrum power supply. Oh, 
I'll salvage that because those are quite useful, those um, rubber grommets. You can see where it's been repaired in the past. I oh, don't know, it's a bit it's better than some of the ones I've seen, so I probably will save that. Save that little bit there for reuse if I'm uh, repairing a um, like spectrum power supply or something like that. We'll cut that off. You can, with a lot of care, actually get that wire out of there. And I've, I've done it before, and if you're watching your gadgets uh, videos, um, you've seen him do the same thing. So you can reuse them little grommets. So I'll go in my spares box. We've got a nice long piece of wire here, though. But which of these is the longer? Because they're both going to need splitting in two to go where they need to go in the actual unit. But whichever one's the longer is what I'll use for the mains well, <laughs> they're basically exactly the same length so it doesn't really matter um, this is slightly thicker it doesn't really matter um, we'll use this we'll use this for connecting up the um, subs so we'll cut that in half to graph these wires onto the connectors there and if, if all this works out we can do the same with the two connectors we've got down there and we can graft um, this wire on to actually go to the speakers in the actual um, in the actual unit one not very thick this wire but these are on a short little short little tails so it shouldn't matter too much right, make sure those are both the same because what, what I don't want to do is um, have like the left and the right crossed over so I think if I have them that way around like that and we use white as the um, positive and black as the negative we can use this wire yep. there we go, they're stripped I already have very broken teeth from doing that. I don't recommend it if um, if your teeth are in good condition. Right, let's uh, let's get these connected on here. We we'll just twist them and then we'll solder them. In fact, the conductor thickness inside is probably about the same. To be fair, it's just this black wire has got a thicker um, insulation on it. I think the actual conductors inside are about the same. Feels it anyway when I twist them together like that. So that's one. Let's do the other one. We're going the same way round. I want the white one to the top, which is that way round. Connect them. I can um, insulate these with just a little bit of insulation tape when we've um, finished. I will solder them obviously, I'm not going to just um, twist and tape them. Let's get that. Twisted on there like that. And where's my solder? There's my soldering guy. Where's my solder go? Some more solder from upstairs. I don't think I've got a uh, got enough to actually do it here yet. I suppose I better start bringing stuff like that um, down into here, especially after we've finished today. That's that one done. So 
that's that done. There. And there. There we go. So that's we've got two connectors there. So we can actually plug the sub up and make sure that that side. We, I'm, I'm pretty sure the sub's going to work because when we had it connected up incorrectly before, uh, it was getting the sub frequencies coming out of these speakers. And then obviously when we swapped it round, it did work correctly. Um, right, so that should be okay. Let me bring the sub in. Now this is really fortunate actually because not all sub, a lot of things. So the sub's mono. This is um, like a stereo sub. Um, if you actually look at the speaker, it's got two sets of um, connections on it for two. Uh, it's basically it's got two coils wound on the same um, farmer inside. Um, so either the left or the right channel can um, activate the speaker, depending on where the sub frequency is um, needed. I'm, I'm guessing, I'm presuming that's how it works. Um, I've worked on quite a few you know, um, speaker systems that have got a sub in them and they don't all have that. Some just have um, standard two connections to the, uh, to the speaker. But these Altec Lansing ones, um, these all had um, these speakers with the, um, with the dual connections. And it does look like this amplifier, this is just a, a flute, but it does look like this amplifier uses the same, um, the same idea. Right, well, I need to tin them up. Or we'll get them to solder into place. Let's just tin them wires up. There we go. There we go. Right, we can solder this um, to the speaker. Now which one's which way around? Um, there we go, that one in there. I'm just going to um, tack these on for now because we we'll probably will have to disconnect them to fit all this thing together. So for the moment I'm just going to loosely tack the wires in place so we can actually make a test and see if it's actually going to work with this, um, with this speaker. I mean I think all these speakers are good, I think that's why I kept them when, um, when I broke all them speakers up. Essentially what I did, this is back in the late 90s, I managed to pick up um, a massive lot, I think I had about well over a hundred of these things. Um, they were very high end Altec Lansing um, computer speaker systems and I bought about a hundred faulty ones at auction and probably got about half of them working, uh, just swapping different bits between them. And I used to have a stall um, every now and again at the um, Bowlers Computer Market in Manchester and um, I sold uh, basically what I'd repaired out of them um, there. And um, ones I couldn't repair, I just stripped anything that was obviously of um, use out of them. And I did, uh, I did um, save a load of these speakers and I think I've probably got about, I don't know, Seven or eight of them left, I don't know. I've got a box with a few in them left. I've used them um, every now and again over the years for things. I actually built a, uh, back when I was at uni, I had a BMW um, E30 um, two door coupe. And I built a rather awesome sound system for that. And I used, um, I think I had, um, I can't remember, I had six or eight of these um, in the back of it for the sub and it kicked. It really did kick that thing. Right, um, that's all connected up. Let's connect this. I have to be a bit careful, I don't want anything to short out. I've got quite a few um, just exposed uh, wires at the moment. That is switched off there so we should be fairly safe. I'll reconnect that one. I'm getting there. There. So that's connected. Should really put some tape around these wires now so they don't short, but we'll be okay if we're 
if we're mindful of that. Make sure them wires aren't shorting on anything. They're okay. Those wires are okay, and those wires are okay. So that's everything connected up again. Let's uh, let's power this thing back up. That's all powered back up. So we've got the sub connected this time. Let's go back to Bluetooth because I've got my um, my phone here, and this should still be um, connected up. Yeah, I just heard it sync up to the phone then. Come on, you silly thing. You have to be... Oh, right, we've got 2% on the battery. Um, just bear with me a sec. I'll just go and have to grab my um, charger or else we're going to run out of battery before um, we go any further. Right, okay. Uh, we've got power, we're charging now, so let's, um, let's try that again. Right, now let's play, um, play this music again. There we are. And the sub is indeed working. Let's get some bit of volume there. That's yeah, that's working really nicely actually. That's quite good. Mm. I mean, it goes fairly loud actually. It certainly goes loud enough for in here. Turn that back down again. Yeah, excellent. Turn it off. So, I'm a bit perplexed really. Was it really just as simple as, turn this all off. So honestly, was it just as simple as it had fallen over and because that's no support on it, that um, heat sink there, it's literally, it flaps in the breeze. And um, was it just the force of it falling over had managed to break the electrical connections on there? And obviously whoever owned it um, didn't know how to repair it or wasn't sure. And all they've done is just pull the speakers out of it and throw it outside. Um, in which case, I'm quite pleased with this really. Right, what I'm going to do, um, I'll get this cleared out of the way for now. And we'll get the cabinet back in because we're going to have to do a little bit of work to that cabinet to make it um, make it as I actually want it. Put it that way. Um, I don't want the control panel there on the back. I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. And obviously, we're going to have to modify it to take these um, to take these speakers because these are a little bit bigger than uh, what would have originally been in there. So. Um, I'll just pause the video, we'll get the um, cabinet back in and we'll have a look at um, modifying that for the um, needs and means that I want, so back in a sec. Okay, I've got the cabinet back in. It is actually quite substantial this, I mean it's only MDF, but it's it's not dead thin, it's actually, you know, it's not a bad cabinet really, that's why I thought it would probably um, do quite nicely for something like that, and also uh, fortunately, the wiring to the um, tweeters is actually still here. Looks like he's actually cut it by the um, look of it. It's not been ripped out, it's actually been cut, which is quite nice. So all we've really got to do, I could go and have another hunt in my um, stash and I'm sure I've probably actually got some speakers that would fit in there. But I've got these, um, I don't have another use for them. So we might as well look at fitting um, fitting these in there. It's just basically we're going to have to do a little bit of trimming to the um, to 
to the wood here and it should fit in quite nicely. What I'm going to do, just to start off with, basically just roughly get them where they need to go. What I'm doing is I'm just looking through the um, the screw holes there so I can just see the same amount of the old hole, the old um, bracket round it. I'm just going to draw around it with a pen. We can wipe this um, sharpening mark off after if we want, but there's going to be covers over these, so I'm not I'm not that bothered about um, marking it. I just want to see where that speaker is actually going to going to go. And basically, what we're going to have to do is just take out like this amount. I think essentially, if we just cut a little bit bigger than um, the aperture there. I have to do a bit on that side there. Take that out there. Take it out a bit there, like that. And that should allow enough room for that um, speaker to drop in there. Now, we've probably got quite a few. Um, probably got quite a few ways we could actually do that. I think I'm probably just going to do it with a um, jigsaw scene. I still have a jigsaw in the corner over there. You could probably actually get away with doing it with um, even a Dremel or something like that. It's not... Although one of the problems is it's MDF dust. It's nasty stuff. The advantage of using the jigsaw is we won't create as much dust as it was to perhaps try and um, Dremel it out. Anyway, I'm going to... Um, have a quick go at just um, sorting that out, and I'll be back as soon as um, as soon as that's done. Okay, I'll probably freely admit those are probably not the roundest holes I have ever cut in my life. But if we try the speakers in there, the speakers do actually um, they do actually fit. They're not going to fit dead flush for the simple fact that they need a recess cutting in there for that um, that on the speaker to go in and I'm not going to that extent these are going to have covers on them so it's not going to matter but basically what we need to do now is we need to connect the wires from the speakers and the tweeter and drop that through and then we can actually have a look at um, the other modification I'm going to do to this thing but I think the first thing I want to do is actually get these connected up so I've made up a loom, I've made it, basically made a wire up we can push through the hole in the back of the um, speaker housing there. We can push that through. I've made these wires up and I've um, basically I've taped all the um, twisted connections and dodgy connections. I've now um, just done with some insulation tape, make them a bit uh, a bit nicer. Right. Okay. So we need to strip this wire here. Like that. I've got the wires from the tweeter there. I hope the tweeters work. I don't actually um, ascertain whether the tweeters work or not, but we can try. It sounds pretty nice without them, actually, even without them, so um, it will do. Plus, I can easily find a pair of tweeters if they are dead. We'll twist them two wires together like that. And we need to tin them up and then we can just solder them in place to the speaker there. So, got some solder here. The soldering going which I've got hung up there. Let's get the speaker out of the way so I don't uh, stick the wires onto it. There we are. So let's tin these wires up. There we are. That should do. And we can solder these onto the back of the speaker. 
It's fortunate that they left us enough um, wire on them tweeters that we can actually do this. Otherwise we'd have to um, rewire the tweeters before we could um, connect the speakers up. But there is just enough um, there is just enough room fortunately. There we go, that's that one on. That's okay. We'll do the other side. There we go, that should do. Just hold it while the uh, solder actually solidifies. And there we go. I'll put the uh, arrow back up there so we'll make sure those connections are good and solid, which they are. And we can drop the speaker in. Like that. And obviously we need some screws just to screw the speaker down. Got some small screws here which should be suitable. I think I've got enough of them. This is whenever I scrap anything, I always save any useful looking um, any useful looking screws. And that's these little um, jam jars are uh, really handy for uh, storing things like these small screws in. Right, so let's see if we've got a better screwdriver than that. I don't want it to slip on me. That's more like it. That one's better. Right. And these are fortunately are self a self tapping screw, but getting them to go into MDF can be a bit of, a bit of fun. There we go. That's screwing in now. So we don't want to over tighten them. Put another one in on that side there. Come on. Should really use a drill bit to start it but it should go. There we go. Hold it, put two more in. In fact, that'll do just to hold it for the time being because what I want to just check now is to see actually whether the front is still going to fit on because it would be nice to have the, um, have the fronts on. And there we are. The front fits on, even though this, it's got a larger speaker in there, there is enough room. Um, to actually take the larger speaker. So that's not too much of a problem. That's really nice. So I can actually reuse the um, reuse the fronts. That's great. Right, what I'll do, I won't bore with you with me um, screwing them screws in there. I'll get them screwed in. I'll do the same on the other side, get that in. And then we can have a look at uh, what I'm actually going to do with the um, power panel and have and have because I'm going to relocate that on the um, case. So uh, back in a sec. Okay, we have both speakers now mounted in the cabinet. We flick it onto its um, onto its back side now. Oop. Get this round. There we are. Now the next thing is at the moment the amplifier went in. I've got a wire there. Hopefully, I can get hold of the other wire. Yeah, I should be able to. Um, caught up there but we should be able to drop that other wire down for the other side so at the moment the um, amplifier is there in the back I don't want that because I want this to fit flat against the um, back of the bench there right against the wall I don't want messing about plus it's going to be rather difficult if I want to you know, unplug one of the cables plug anything in to have to pull it out every time so what I'm going to do actually going to remount the amplifier from the back there onto the bottom here because this is basically going to be sat up like that it means I've got access to the power for it to the um, to the coax the optical there and the um, RCA jacks the power switch everything basically 
it makes more sense for me to have that on the um, back so what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to cut that hole we've got there out there I'll make a closing panel I mean it shouldn't make that much difference to be honest because it is a port of design there's actually a port that comes right through from the uh, oh I don't know actually thinking about it the way it's been designed because this, this is an engineered cabinet um, the sub will actually sound proper once it's um, in the cabinet really we do need to cover that over so I'll have to make a little cover piece to go over where the um, amplifier used to be and we'll cut a new hole that size on the back here basically and the amplifier will um, sit in there um, that's probably going to be the best way so what I'll do I'm not going to bother filming um, doing the woodwork but I'll get the holes cut in this and then um, have a bit of a tidy up because even um, just cutting these few little holes is making an awful mess in here um, but it's freezing outside and I don't really want to wander down to the summer house to do it um, so I'll get those holes cut and then we will come back and we'll um, finally put this thing um, together and see how it sounds so back in a sec okay I've taken care of that basically I've cut a piece of thin uh, MDF that I had lying around and I've just screwed that over where the old um, panel used to be on the bottom I've cut can you see what I'm um, showing you there yeah yes you can um, as you can see I've cut a new hole there and the panel will drop in there nicely like that now I know it, on the original one it would have been recessed in and what have you like I said it doesn't matter for what I'm um, doing I'm not going to bother taking a router and um, rebate that in it's, there's just no point just spending, uh, you're know, spending excess energy, really. Right, I've got some screws for that. Put them in there. We've just got to hope we've got basically enough screws to um, put this thing all together. Right, okay. So the first thing we're going to need to do is install the um, saw. So I'll get the wiring for that. Throw it in. I can put the sub in position. I don't think the screw holes are going to line up, but again, this is actually slightly smaller than the original. But it will it will work. It will do the um, it will do the job. I'll show you. There we go, that has fit in nicely. I'll just find some screws and we can also we can screw that into um, position. What am I going to screw that into position with? Because it would be nice if I had some black screws for that. Well these are total overkill but they'll do the job. And these really are a bit on the uh, Ridiculously long size, but it's one in. Just gonna get one in there. That one's in. That one's in. That one might be a little bit tricky, but let's see what we can do. If it only holds on in the tree, it only holds in the tree. I had to go at a little bit of an angle to get that one in, but it did go. Let's try that one. There we go. And that one I've already screwed down in. So that is the sub in position. Got the wiring for the sub there. Get my chair in so I can sit down to do this. And I'll turn my heater down a bit because it's getting rather warm in here. Right. Now I need to get the wiring for the two speakers and pull that through. Get the wiring for the speaker on that side there. And I need to see if I can fish out the wiring for the 
speaker on this side and I think it's behind here. Basically there's a, there's a cardboard tube in here, it's part of the port for the sub and the wiring's just caught behind it I think. So I've just got to figure out a way of getting that getting that wiring um, to this side here. And what can we use? I've got a screwdriver, big screwdriver here. Can I put my thing, my hand in? And grab it down. So the problem is with where the port is, it makes it rather difficult to actually uh, get the wiring. I did lift the thing up. Before. I'll try that again. I did try this before, but it didn't work. But uh, let's try again and just stand it up. Have a bit of a shake inside it. I might be able to get the wire to, to drop out. No, I tell you what, folks, just bear with me, and I'll sort that one wire out, and then we can get the rest of this thing um, connected up. So back in a sec. Okay, that was a bit of a faff, but I managed to um, I managed to fish it through with a bit of wire in the end. So we've got basically our left and right speakers there. We've got our um, sub speaker there. Those two connections. So I thought we'd best do. Let's might as well put it all back in the cabinet. So we've got the uh, main control panel. Let's. Um, get the main control panel back on the front of it to start with. Fill for this with all the um, dust from um, doing that cutting, but never mind. I'll get you tilted up a little bit. So we need to get this back in here. Fortunately, it didn't break anything, um, which is which is quite nice. And that's going to be the top, so we want it that way on. Um, it's a shame he, he thought it was necessary to keep the speakers out of it, but to be honest, those um, those speakers I fitted there are probably a bit of an upgrade to what would have been there originally. Anyway, those aren't particularly bad speakers. I can't 100% remember what I pulled them out. I think it was actually probably another soundbar. Right. Okay. So that's back in there. Push that wire back through. Really, I should put some hot hot melt glue in that uh, hole down there, but for the moment, I think we should be okay. I'll bang a couple of screws to hold this in position. Now, unfortunately, I could only find two which looked reasonably sensible, so we'll stick two in for now. And if I can find another two of these, we'll put another two in. I mean, they are the wrong colour, they would be better if they were black, but it's what I've got that will fit and not be too big. One in there. One in there, that holds the panel on nice and tight. Right, let's um, spin this round and then we can um, have a look. We can have a look at connecting the actual um, amplifier back up and fitting that back in here. Right, so we've got the amplifier. And we know that wire connects to there. Like that. We've got that three pin connector goes on there. Four pin connector goes on there. Then we've got. Oh, it is marked. So our left, yeah, goes there on that one. Like that. Our right. on that one there, that's the right way around isn't it? Yeah. So that goes in there like that. That's that one connected. The 
finally we've got the two for the subs. Let's make sure which way around that goes. That way. That one on there. So obviously we've had a bit of faff with this thing being that um, the previous person had actually taken all the wiring out, not just um, not just the speakers. It's a bit odd. That's needed a bit of speaker wire for whatever they wanted to use them on. Right, there we go, that's all connected back up. Now we want that to go in there. And that all fits in nicely. And we need some screws and we can screw that down down where it's going. Right, I've got a drill there. And we've got all them screws that we saw would say before. square. Don't have to be perfect, like I said this is for my um, workbench, but nice if it's reasonably square. Two. Three. Four. These aren't quite the same, but they'll do. Gone in. That one has. Yeah, one screw off having a full set in there, but that's good enough for me. So this is something for just use in the workshop. That should be absolutely fine. Right. So we've got the panel re relocated on the bottom there. We've got the uh, the replacement speakers fitted. So our re replacement speakers are in. The uh, front panel's mounted back in. Let's see if the uh, let's see if our grill cloths will um, will fit back on properly. We've tried this before, but let's just make sure that they go on. That one goes on there. And that one goes on there. Lovely. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a really good, because basically everything now is covered in little bits of MDF dust uh, from doing that. So I'm going to have a really, really good tidy up in here, a bit of a sweep, a bit of a hoover, and then we will um, we'll come back and we will give this a final proper test. So, back in a sec. Okay, and here we are. Basically all finished. Well, apart from the fact it's currently just sitting on um, two toolboxes there and there. It's uh, pretty much how I wanted it. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, whether I'm going to put some brackets on the wall and mount it on them. But that will limit the amount of um, things I can actually put on the top of it. Or I'm just going to make two, two side pieces for it, for it to actually sit on. I won't be doing that tonight because it's far too cold to be going down to my sheds to look for tin before doing something like that. And this video's already dragged on quite long, so uh, I will, next time you see this, it will um, all be well that this works out. Um, we haven't tested it properly yet since I've reassembled it. But all being well, um, next time you see this, it probably will be on some form of support, so it actually does what I, um, I do, it does what I want it to do. Anyway, I've got the power lead for it. So let's plug this in. We'll drop that down the back. And we'll plug it in. Where's the other side of that wire gone? So the whole point of this is, it can go on my bench like this, 
obviously this is going to be a little bit higher up um, and things like my desoldering station, my soldering station, my air rework station, things like that that I use you know, often can all live in that space underneath. I can have my screens on the top there, I've still got extra space there and I've still got loads of space here for actually working on stuff. So that's worked out really quite well. Let's um, see we'll plug it in. On. At least it's powered up. Right. First thing we'll try is the uh, we'll try the um, Bluetooth. That's um, already paired with my phone. And we'll again we'll just play some of this um, royalty-free um, music. Um, Perhaps that. Um, I generally speaking, used from the same, um, the actual the same person for uh, royalty free music. So what um, I'll do is I'll put a link down in the description of the um, of the music that I am actually using, so um, you can take a look at it yourself. Well, there we go. Decent. Let me see if I can find something that's um, a bit heavier, maybe. Oh, I've got some jazz here, let's try some jazz. punch with that sub in there anyway. Turn that down a bit. It's certainly got quite a chuck quite a bit of punch with that um, sub in there. Stop that. I'll pause that and what we'll do, we'll try some of the other inputs on here. Because the one that I am I know I will be using more than anything else will be uh, things like the phono input um, behind. So I'll give that a try. I've got a um, 3.5 to twin phono lead here. So we'll try connecting that up. We have already tried the auxiliary input, but and I won't be bothering trying any of the digital inputs today. But that is the um, phono input there. We'll try connecting that up. Yeah, got fluff around the end of my 3.5 jack there. We'll connect that up. We'll go to um, RCA and let's try that. Works perfectly. And I suppose the last thing we should really do is just test, I mean we know it works, but we'll test the auxiliary again on the front there. And plug into there. Plug that in and we'll just change again, auxiliary. And again, that works perfectly. So this really should be absolutely ideal for what I want. Like I said, it's nice to have some um, decent powered speakers actually on your workbench. I have got some, you know, some um, passive speakers which are going in this room for you know, test purposes. But many times, like, actually, good case in point, um, there'll be a video coming up reasonably soon, well, after, well, once I've made it, because I've not made it yet, 
Um, I'm having some issues with uh, my Amiga 600. The audio on my um, Amiga 600, it's not sounding right. It's, I'm not actually sure what's wrong with it yet. But basically having this on the bench will obviously be a, a boom for um, working on things like that. We've got um, standard phono there so we can just pull the two phono um, outputs you plug them straight into the back of the Amiga and we've got a good way of actually seeing what the audio um, on it's doing. It's, they're far enough away, the speakers here, for me working here I can definitely tell left from right, put it that way, that's not going to be, a, uh, that's not going to be an issue. It gives me a handy stand to put my uh, monitors up there. Obviously all I've got to do really now is just make something. That's probably a little bit low the where it is there. I probably want uh, probably about that kind of height. So I'll have to make something and bring it up. In fact, what I should really do is measure the height of my um, desoldering station and a few other things I really want to fit under there and have it just that little bit higher than them so they can fit up and under comfortably. Uh, but it's not too high up and they've got, still got enough room there to have a decent monitor um, set up up there. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. Like I said, uh, this video has probably actually ended up as quite a long one and it weren't really intending it to. It depends how I um, edit it down actually, whether I just... What I tend to do with my videos, because um, I don't have a huge amount of time and quite frankly my computer is struggling with editing um, anything you know, half decent. Uh, what I tend to do is just take the clips, top and tail them uh, and use um, any video converter to string them all together render it to something that YouTube um, likes and upload it that way. Um, but um, yeah, I'm quite I'm quite pleased with that little project and it's cost nothing. I've, I've not spent a penny on this. So that was free. Uh, the speakers I already had out of scrap equipment. Um, what have I spent? 20p on some solder maybe? Or even the wire and bits and bats that I've used on it was stuff that I had um, lying around already. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, mini project. So, uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.